Hello friends, Coolio here and welcome back to the channel. Today guys, we're gonna be checking out the official launch for Aura Kingdom 2. Now, I know you guys are probably gonna be like, Coolio, you're super late on this one. It came out like a week ago and I totally understand. To be honest with you, this game kind of just like went under my radar. So once I found out like the game like had officially launched, I was like, let's just jump in, let's make a video. Sure, I'm a little bit late, but you know what? I'm always down to be playing, you know, new mobile MMORPGs. Now, before we actually jump into the game, we are gonna go ahead and make a brand new character. As well, I wanna ask you guys, if you are enjoying these videos, if you wanna see more videos like this, then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. All that good stuff, it helps out immensely, and I would be really, really appreciative of it if you did that. Okay, so in this game, there's a total of four classes that you can play, and the cool thing is, is three out of the four classes are not gender locked. The only one that is gender locked is the nymph which is basically just an archer class you can only be playing as a lolly if you're gonna be playing as an archer however all the other classes the elementalist the dragoon and then the final one is the shinobi are not gender locked which is pretty awesome so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna pick the shinobi and we're gonna uh, go ahead and customize a female character because i already have a male character which we're gonna be playing in a little bit anyway now i'm not gonna go through and show you all the different customization stuff but you know we got hair face eye skin tone and a couple different options between them but basically what i ended up doing was just hit random and honestly one of the things that with this game is you can't really go too crazy with your characters so they all look pretty good anyway it's a pretty simple character customization it's not amazing in any way. Honestly, the only thing that really stands out is the fact that they have, you know, you can be a male or female for most of the classes in the game, which is weird that I have to say that, but most games that are coming out don't really have that kind of feature. Another thing too is when it comes to the customization of your characters, specifically with like the armors and stuff like that, your characters like outfit and stuff will not change based off the armor that you equip onto them, which is really, really dumb. It's all about the costumes and you can buy costumes through the costume shop. There is a way to like craft them, but it looks like it may take a little bit of time to do that. But I'll say too, that it does give you a few co cosmetic items up front, like these glasses. Your character will get the glasses uh, pretty much straight away. You also get this mask fairly early on into the game, but that's character customization. Let's go ahead and we're just gonna head on back and we're gonna go and select my level 15 or my level 18 character, Coolio, jump into the game and show you guys the actual gameplay. Now, this game is not really going to blow your minds in any way. I mean, I think it's a pretty good looking game. However, there is, the game just feels really jarring to play. So I've been playing it for a little over an hour now. And I have to say, I've played a lot of these mobile MMOs and this one just feels weird to play. Like, it's almost like every aspect of this game was like 99% completed. They just didn't finish the 1%, which is like the polishing of the game. Like combat feels really janky. The user interface, there's still a couple of things that aren't translated correctly. There's just a few things in this game that just make it feel like it just needed one more step of polishing before it was ready to launch. I don't know. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below what your, your guys' ideas on this game. Like if you guys have been playing it, it just, it feels clunky to play. Like I've been trying to do manual combat even though most of this game is auto combat, it's it's no different than a lot of other mobile MMOs. Like, if you're not a big fan of the auto combat mobile MMOs, you're probably not going to like this game. The really, like the big thing that makes this game stand out to me though, like if you, if you really wanna give it a try, is the world itself. I think the game looks pretty good for an anime MMORPG. This is a, this is a pretty good looking MMO. I'm a little bit sad that it is so heavily focused on auto gameplay because I would really love to kind of explore this region that I'm in. It'd be really cool to have a lot more exploration, a lot more manual gameplay in a game like this, but I can't really say that's a negative because some people really like it, some people hate it. It's basically up to you guys. Like I've, I've done videos where I'm like, yeah, this game has so much auto gameplay, I hate it. But then people are like, well, Coolio, it's a mobile game. It's, it's for people that don't have time to sit in front of a computer. Totally understand. But some of us want a game that we can manually play, even if it's on our phone. So you guys decide whether or not you're gonna like that uh, or not so here we go so the gameplay the basics everything like this auto gameplay move from one zone to the next taking down enemies there are every once in a while moments where you'll have manual gameplay like there's moments where there are these like little mini games that will pop up they're fairly interesting they kind of break it up every once in a while but it's not something that really stands out they're very very basic mini games there's a couple of little bosses like this that i'm about to fight right now but i've noticed something with this game and maybe like Maybe when you get farther and farther into it, it gets more difficult, Destroyed. but I've gone into a couple of dungeons and I've gone up against a couple of bosses that have been stronger than me, but have done like hardly any damage at all. Like they, they hardly hit me. So if you look at this guy, I'm causing like somewhere around like a thousand damage to him. He's dealing one damage to me, one, two damage. 
like i get that you know some people are probably gonna be going through this boss on auto but you can at least bump up the difficulty a little bit you know make it so like maybe we have to take over or maybe our character isn't powerful enough we have to work on it i don't know i just feel like there's a lot of moments in this game where i've gone up against epic bosses or dungeons and the enemy is barely doing any damage to me. I could basically let my character sit there and do nothing and I still somehow end up beating it. So yeah, that's another thing that I've noticed about this game that hasn't been uh, hasn't been that enjoyable. Now there is one aspect of this game I think some people may enjoy, but it kind of takes away from the massively aspect of this game, the multiplayer aspect of the game. And that's the game's Eidolon system. Now, how this game ends up working, where are the Eidolons at? Um, not, oh no, not the emblems. The, oh my gosh, where? Oh, there they are. Eidolon. So let's go ahead and take a look at my Eidolon. So there are a couple that you can collect as you play through the game. I don't know if you can collect some of the more rare ones from like loot boxes and stuff. I haven't really seen anything like that. And the shop itself is just crazy, crazy confusing. But I do think there are some really, really cool characters or Eidolons that you can collect. And you can basically set up a party and they'll help you throughout your gameplay. Like they'll help you run through dungeons, they'll help you take down bosses, they'll help you grind. There's, I mean, there's a there's a lot of pretty cool ones, like the Skeleton King. Let's see, what's this guy's name? The Ruins Defender. So I do like this. I like the Eidolon system, but I do feel like it kind of takes away from the multiplayer aspect of it because basically you can run into dungeons, you can do multiplayer content, and as long as you've got a pretty decent Eidolon team to help you out, you don't really need to team up with other players. I, I mean, as far as like the experience that I've had jumping into dungeons and stuff, like, they don't even ask me, like, hey, do you want to partner up with people before you go into the dungeon? It's basically like, here's the dungeon, let's jump into it, have fun, you're probably going to be okay, because you've got your Eidolon team uh, with you. Now, what, with the things with the Eidolons, they're kind of like, you go through, you can kind of collect them and stuff as you're playing through the story. I haven't collected them in any other way, but there are a couple of things that you can do with them. You can evolve them, which just increases their overall star rating. You do need to get specific... I'm really hoping they're not pay to win elements, these exclusive wills for the for the different characters, but it's kind of looking like that. But again, I haven't really seen that aspect. The game hasn't like showed me the cash up very like it hasn't thrown the cash up into my face, which I think is a good thing. But when I went and looked at the cash up, super, super confusing. There is a fortify system where you get this dust that you can like kind of feed to your Eidolons and level them up. And then there's this interaction system where basically they'll talk to you and you can increase your affinity with that specific Eidolon, making them a little bit powerful based off of your answer. So where is the Black Anchor Cannon Mansion of Carlet on the cliff of Mount Fertile? I'm going to say that one. Yes. So we got affinity plus one. What's the max level of an Eidolon? Uh, the master's current level. I'm pretty sure that's correct. It's affinity plus one. Who's the master of the Golden Wheat Village? Juan. Nope, wrong answer. That's fine. But I increased my affinity with him anyway. Your, like, leader of your party as well um, gains affinity faster than your other ones too. So keep that in mind as well if you're going to be playing this game. So there is one last thing I do want to show you before we actually uh, end the video. There is a power-up system in this game that's fairly straightforward. However, there is some pretty unique aspects to customizing your character so you have all of your different skills that you have right here and you can power them up by using skill books and you get quite a lot of skill books and you can use them to kind of increase the expertise of certain skills so you can kind of go through and really like train your character specifically the way that you want like if you want certain abilities to be much stronger than other ones you can spend your skill book specifically on those skills so i do like that uh the eidolon system which we're not going to get into because we already did that and then there's the upgrading system which you can use mana crystals, which you get through simply playing through dungeons. Now, I played a level 20 dungeon and it gave me like level 40 gear. So I don't really know how the gear system really correlates with your level, but it looks like you, you can equip some pretty strong gear to your character uh, later on. Now, there is one last thing I do want to show you guys when it comes to the character system, and that is the talent tree. This is another thing that I actually really enjoy. I like it when games have like horizontal progression, not like a, a very linear progression, but horizontal I think is a lot of fun when you can really kind of go through and customize your characters. Now, as you level up, you'll get talent points that you can distribute into any of these specific nodes. As you uh, max out one node, it unlocks the next one. So I actually really do appreciate this type of progression system. I think it looks really, really good. It adds a little bit you know, more customization to your character, it adds a little bit more in intrigue and depth to uh, how your character actually ends up playing. So like if I wanted to increase the dragon charge mastery, it increases my dragon charge damage by plus 3%. There is one little thing, and this is just like a minor thing, but in order to upgrade it, see these like little arrows, like the red pointed down arrow and the blue pointed up? 
those are like what you can do to upgrade them but i didn't know that at first like i thought there'd be like a really big button like if they can just say like upgrade not this like little tiny button right here that's just uh, that's just a little minor gripe on my end there you guys go, Aura Kingdom 2, a new mobile MMORPG, doesn't really stand out compared to anything else. I do think the world itself looks beautiful. I mean, if you're a big fan of the old Aura Kingdom, this might be something you'd be interested in. If you just want a new MMO to play, well, it's here, it's available to download. Well, again, guys, thanks so much for watching this video, and if you liked it, leave a like on the button, or, you know, hit the like button, subscribe, notification, all that good stuff. All right, friends, my name's Coolio, and I'll see you next time.